Hello and Namaskar. My name is Sean Roy, also known as Royal, and I'm a Bengali American medical student and musician. I'm originally from the Bengal region of South Asia. Bengalis are the third largest ethnic group in the world, while our mother tongue, Bangla, is the seventh most widely spoken by total number of speakers. But it's rarely felt that way for me. Having a hyphenated ethnic identity, such as my own, is difficult to navigate. This identity is often reduced to just being multilingual, rather than having a different level of cultural awareness. My roots are in Bengal, but my branches are here in America. Throughout my life, I've been made to feel that I exist in moments only as one specific part of my identity. Take something as simple as asking yourself right now what your favorite movie is. As you're thinking about it, if multiple answers are coming to mind, are those answers changing based on where you are and who you're with? In general, do you think you'd feel hesitant to share any of those answers, again, based on where you are and who you're with? Now, yes, there can be a number of factors at play here, but I suspect that those of you who carry a hyphenated ethnic identity, especially one with American at the end of it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably heard, what'd you say? What kind of name is that? Is that even English? You see, I find that there's this expectation, this expectation that you have to separate your hyphenated ethnic identity into its parts and embody a specific part based on where you are and who you're with, rather than being able to embody the whole. I was born in India, and my family and I moved here when I was young. I've been raised here alongside my younger sister. So on one hand, we were listening to American hip hop and rap music, and on the other, equally listening to Bollywood and Bengali music at home. See, the split translated to everything. It wasn't just movies and music, it was all of the art and forms of expression that we consumed. And it was difficult still to find role models who captured the whole of our identity. We had to be content for the most part with exclusively American role models or exclusively Bengali ones. In college, I had greater exposure to people of South Asian descent. I was able to explore this umbrella identity, so to speak, through a competitive fusion a cappella team and a competitive fusion dance team. This exploration consisted of marrying Western music and Eastern music in the forms of vocal arrangements, mixes, and mashups. The novelty at this point was for me to hear anything remotely South Asian in combination with anything remotely American. Remember those stats I told you in the beginning? They still didn't hold true in these communities. It was very rare for me to come across Bengali Americans. As a result, I was left to venture through Hindi and Punjabi songs fused with American English songs. While it's true that I think this exploration brought me more in touch with my umbrella identity, it eventually made me realize just how underrepresented I felt specifically as a Bengali American. I could see myself continuing to operate in this creative sphere, but just because you can do something doesn't mean that it's bringing you fulfillment. After college, I began to take greater notice of Bengali diaspora creatives, creatives who I saw were exploring this expression of their hyphenated identity. Initially, I thought I would need the support of and collaboration with these established artists in order to make something for myself. Now, I'm sure this is something we can all relate to. We always look for that blueprint in someone else rather than having that conversation with ourselves of maybe we already know what it is that we want to do, but we're reluctant because we don't know if we're going to be able to make it on our own. And then we just wait and wait and wait, but that blueprint never materializes from somewhere else. I think it only materializes when we take that risk of asking ourselves, how can I alone make this happen? That moment that we take that risk, that moment that we take that time and space to introspect, that's when the blueprint materializes and realizing that you could be that person. For me, 
I realized that I didn't need to wait for anybody. I could be that person. But what did that mean? What would embodying the whole of my identity as a Bengali American sound like in music? Just as we see in other forms of expression, fusion music tends to come down to the parts rather than the whole. When I was exploring my umbrella identity through the competitive fusion dance team and competitive fusion a cappella team, I noticed this comfort that creators and consumers felt when there were very clear demarcations of where one identity began and another identity ended. It was important for me to break this mentality, and so I first set my aim on the composition of the song that I would ultimately make, the song that you heard when I walked on stage today. So, let's have some fun. Growing up listening to American hip hop and rap music, this genre finds its way into the soundscape via the main drums. Equally listening to Bollywood and Bengali music at home, especially folk Bengali music, this genre finds its way into the soundscape via the dotara, a traditional string instrument, and the tabla, a traditional percussion instrument from the region. No stranger to self-doubt, as I was creating this instrumental, I began to wonder, would this attempt at being my own source of representation, would it only speak to me? Was this the correct way to go about it? And why stop at music? If I'm being honest, I feel this doubt in my medical pursuits as well. I don't know of, nor have I come across many Bengali Americans who captured the whole of my identity as a medical student and a musician. While Asian Americans are certainly overrepresented in the healthcare field here, it's again rarely felt that way for me. The importance of role models and representation, therefore, cannot be underestimated. I think that in most of our endeavors, we as humans and as social people, we look to others for reassurance that the path that we're on is attainable. But how can you become something that you can't see? And for me, the question here was how can I express something that I have not heard before? What I realized is that there is no right or wrong way to express your hyphenated ethnic identity. This identity, like other identities, can be thought of as a spectrum. And everyone who identifies as such is just somewhere along that spectrum. I had to remember that what was driving the creation of this song was the desire to make the kind of music that I wish I had growing up here as a Bengali American. If I felt that I was achieving that, then there was no reason to think too hard on who the song would ultimately resonate with. Speaking my truth on simultaneously expressing both aspects was sufficient and translatable enough. Now the clearest division of fusion music tends to be seen in the lyrical structure. For example, in a mashup, the verse might solely be in Bangla, but the chorus might solely be in English. I had spent so long thinking that there was someone else out there to be that source of representation, I knew that the interplay of the languages used in the lyrics was going to be critical. Through that interplay, I had to demonstrate that I could be my own source of representation. The way to do that was to have the languages flowing freely between each other, as seamlessly as possible. So let's take a listen to what that sounded like. Let me see your hands high. Shop Judy Akshat the pretty big dark high. Doesn't matter what side. Basha Balu Basha Ito Amadeiri same pride. Having heard the influences from Bengali folk, American hip hop, and rap music, and this desired emphasis on the seamlessness of the languages used, we're left with the chorus of Amadeiri same pride. Let me see your hands high. Shop Judy Akshat the pretty big dark high. Doesn't matter what side. Basha Balu Basha Ito Amadeiri. My answer to the question of how to be your own source of representation 
is to find out what it is that resonates with your people. For Bengali Americans and Bengalis all around the world, it's the love of our language, Bangla. It's a language spoken by so many, but built upon the sacrifices of so many. The Bengali language movement and the subsequent Bangladesh Liberation War happened only a few decades ago, as the generations above fought for the recognition and usage of the language, and ultimately their independence. This is the source of our strength and our pride, and was the spark of inspiration for me to create a form of expression that captured that whole of my identity. As a finishing touch, I reached out to several creators of Bengali origin to send in cameos for an accompanying music video. For a song that spoke to the representation that I wanted to hear, it was only right for the video to be the representation that I wanted to see. Ultimately, Amaderi Sain Pride featured more than 20 different creators of Bengali origin, from musicians to artists, singers, and more. I wasn't sure what kind of response I was going to get, but what I did get surprised me. I didn't fully realize how much it meant to people to just experience the expression of their identity. As I reflect, this has driven me to continue to chase the creation of that experience for more people. In your own explorations, perhaps you'll find similarly. Make no mistake, a few months ago, I was looking for the blueprint elsewhere. But taking the time and space to introspect has created a new sense of purpose for me to continue to learn how to not just be what I can't see, but the expression of that being. My challenge for you today is to expand the forms of expressions that you create to capture the whole of your identity whether that be cultural, ethnic, socioeconomic, gender, sexual orientation, and others. For me, this was through music. What will it be for you?